In the United States and Canada, we often find ourselves using the term Caucasian in our everyday vernacular as well as on official government records to describe those of any European descent. In historic anthropology, the term Caucasian was used synonymously with terms such as the European or white race. However, the term's origins are actually a bit divergent in this when the first time the term was recorded around the year 1800 and it was in reference to the Caucasus mountain region which was believed to be the origin point of the Indo-European language family and hence people as well. But by using this logic, the people of Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and half of India would also be considered Caucasian despite the obvious differences between Europeans and Indo-Iranians. The Caucasus region has a very ancient history and is today divided between many post-Soviet countries and is a very mountainous region with many diverse climate zones. Because of these stark natural boundaries in Caucasia, the area has one of the most interesting and diverse religious, linguistic, and ethnic landscapes of any region, and ironically, the appearance of the modern local people on average doesn't exactly look like what Americans would consider Caucasian, which is why I use the term only when strictly referring to the people of the Caucasus rather than white people as a whole. The bizarre patchwork of people and cultures in Caucasia is an interesting, albeit sensitive, situation seeing how the area was a part of the Soviet Union and as such suffered from some of the worst fractures and balkanization of any place in the world, as well as having major ethnic conflicts, many of which are still ongoing to this day. The Caucasus region today is largely defined as the countries of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, along with several territories in the southwest corner of Russia, including places like Dagestan and Chechnya. The area is largely considered to be a transitional region between the Middle East and Eastern Europe, and depending on the definition, can be either considered to be a part of Europe or Asia. One of the earliest civilizations to have directly impacted the region would have to have been the ancient Greeks and Macedonians who sent out ethnic Greek civilians to settle the area along the coast of the Black Sea, and a handful of people still claim Greek descent in the region to this day. Other empires like the Persians, Romans, and Byzantines also had a strong influence with the last civilizations to have significantly changed the region in any way being the Ottomans and the Russian Empire, which would of course later become the Soviet Union. In an ironic twist, even though the Indo-European language family was believed to have originated in or perhaps slightly above Caucasia, and the speakers had to pass through the region to reach the Iranian plateau, only two languages that are spoken natively in the region are of Indo-European origin, with the rest being from other languages that migrated to the region or had been there since before the Indo-European spread. Today we're going to discuss the various people groups and nations of the region divided roughly by language family. The largest group in the region would definitely have to be the Azeri people that are a Turkic ethnic group native to Azerbaijan where they number around 10 million people. They're largely adherents to Shia Islam and their language Azeri is very closely related to neighboring Turkish and as we've discussed in a previous video, there are actually just as many if not more ethnic Azeris living in the neighboring country of Iran to the south in an area known informally as South Azerbaijan, in addition to a large community of Aziris in Turkey to the west, although it's unknown how many or exactly where they are, seeing how the last linguistic census Turkey conducted was in the 1960s, and they didn't differentiate between speakers of Azerbaijani and Turkish. There are other Turkic groups native to Caucasia, such as the Balkar, Karachi, and Kumik of Russian Caucasia, located a bit north from either Azerbaijan or Turkey, and are also Muslims, yet practice the Sunni branch. The languages spoken by these smaller groups are in the same subfamily and are actually more closely related to the Crimean Tartar language spoken in the Crimean Peninsula, yet their appearance is somewhere between Middle Eastern and Eastern European, like most other Caucasian ethnic groups. The Nogai language spoken throughout northern Caucasia is also a Turkic language which is very closely related to Kazakh and Kyrgyz of Central Asia and interestingly, the appearance of the Nogai people is also very Central Asian which easily distinguishes them from the neighboring Caucasian groups. 
The Nogai, along with the Kalmyks from neighboring Kalmykia, which is not considered a part of Caucasia, are the last remnants of the legacy of the Mongols, with the Nogai being descended from Central Asian Turks and the Kalmyks being descended from ethnic Mongol migrants from the 1600s. A dialect of Turkish known as Meskhetian was formerly spoken in the Georgian region of Meskhetia. However, Joseph Stalin deported every single Meskhetian family to Central Asia or Siberia, fearing their allegiance to Turkey rather than the USSR. One of the oldest groups in the region is the Armenians who inhabit Armenia, along with parts of Georgia and Azerbaijan and the breakaway region of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is claimed as the Republic of Artsakh by ethnic Armenian separatists. And speaking of separatism, the Caucasian region has three nations, with the other two being Abkhazia and South Ossetia, that have broken away from their previous countries and formed their own governments, mostly with the help from a larger neighboring country. However, they're not recognized as legitimate by any other government. Armenians speak an Indo-European language, which linguists used to classify with other Indo-Iranian languages, but now is considered to be a separate branch, which was probably related to the extinct Anatolian languages of Turkey, considered intermediate between Iranian and European language subfamilies. In addition to the Caucasian region, Armenian people also used to inhabit a large section of Turkey known as West Armenia. However, following the Armenian Genocide in 1914 committed by Ottoman officials, the majority of ethnic Armenians in the empire were either killed, scattered to different regions, more on that later, or were forced to go into hiding to conceal their identity. Interestingly, those Armenians that chose to conceal their identity and assimilate into society rather than being killed or deported, largely took Turkish or Kurdish surnames, converted to Islam, and began to identify with those groups. Many of their descendants in Turkey today are beginning to acknowledge their heritage as crypto-Armenians, and their numbers are estimated to be at hundreds of thousands, or maybe even in the millions. The last of the internationally recognized sovereign nations in the Caucasus is the country of Georgia, which shares its name with the U.S. state. However, the Americans have a different etymological origin being named after the British King George, and hence has little to do with the Caucasian country. The Georgian language can be divided into dialects of the Svens, the Mingralians, and the Ajarans, who are distinct from other Georgians, seeing how all other Georgians are Orthodox Christians, while the Ajarans are largely adherents to Sunni Islam. The last people from northeast Turkey are closely related to ethnic Georgians and are also Muslims, yet it's difficult to quantify their exact numbers because of the degree of assimilation for all non-Turkish ethnic groups in Turkey. The Ossetian people in the breakaway Republic of South Ossetia and Georgia and the Russian Republic of North Ossetia are actually a Christian Iranian ethnic group moving to the region from Persia around 2,000 years ago. The remainder of the ethnic groups of the Caucasus are classified into a controversial language family of Caucasian, which can be divided into West and East. This language family contains dozens of smaller ethnic groups, some as tiny as only a few hundred people, with the largest being the Chechens in the Russian Republic of Chechnya, the Avars in the Russian Republic of Dagestan, which is actually the single most ethnically diverse territory of Russia with no single group making up over 30%. The Abkhazians from the separatist nation of Abkhazia are a part of the Western Caucasian family and are one of the most religiously diverse ethnic groups with a significant proportion being either Muslims, atheists, or adhering to the native Abkhaz religion, while the majority are Orthodox Christians. Fascinatingly, a small group of about 300 Abkhazians are actually descended from African slaves brought to the region on the coast of the Black Sea. However, they have largely integrated into the Abkhazian society. The Adige people, or Circassians of Northwest Caucasia, are today largely confined to the Russian Republic of Adigea, although the majority of Krasnodar Krai used to be a part of the Circassian homeland. However, following the Russian expansion into the region centuries earlier, many Muslim Circassians fled across the Black Sea into the Ottoman Empire. Speaking of which, the many Caucasian ethnic groups today have one of the single highest ratios of diaspora of any region on the planet, with almost every people group in the region having a large population 
located outside of their nation's original boundaries. This is especially apparent for the North Caucasian groups like the Chechens, Circassians, Kabardans, and Karachi, who were forcefully displaced or willingly migrated to the Ottoman Empire following the Russian expansion, and today millions of people in Turkey are descended from these Caucasians, although the majority have been assimilated into Turkish society and may or may not identify as ethnic Turks to this day, while many traveled even further south to places like northern Syria and Iraq. Armenians are famous for having one of the single largest rates of diaspora when compared to their home country, with there being around 10 million people of full or partial ethnic Armenian descent outside of Armenia, which only has a population of 3 million people, with most being in the United States, especially California, Russia, and Europe. The region of Caucasia has a truly turbulent and fluctuating history with extreme natural boundaries that have created the ultimate situation for ethnic and religious diversity, separatism, and conflicts, which in turn caused the area to have such a large diaspora to this day. There are many different Caucasian ethnic groups in the region, with varying histories and origins, and although us Americans may like to use the term Caucasian to refer to Europeans in our modern vernacular, it's important to realize that the accurate definition of the term is very different than what we might think, and if the term Caucasian was used in a place like Russia, for example, it would be used strictly to refer to the people native to the Caucasus region on the border between the Middle East and Eastern Europe. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the real Caucasian people down in the comments below. I know there are a lot of groups and sub-regions in the Caucasian region that I didn't get a chance to talk about, but I'll be sure to do a follow-up video soon. As always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason. And I'll see you next time.